Hello, we are back for more Shakespeare. We're still working on Henry V, and today we are in Act Two, Scene Two. Yesterday we had the prologue that informed us that there's three traitors in our midst, uh, Scroop, Cambridge, and Gray. And then also that the action of the play is now gonna be in Southampton. And then Act Two, Scene One, we takes us back to like the clowns from, from um, Henry the fourth parts one and two so we have Nim and we have Pistol and Pistol married quickly even though Nim was supposed to so they're not friends but Bardolph wants them to be so they fight and they draw swords or pistols or some sort of weapon against each other and then a boy comes in and he's like Falstaff is really sick somebody needs to help and uh, the hostess goes to help Falstaff and um, Pistol and Nim fight some more and yeah it's it's just a weird little sort of intermediate intermediary scene but now here we get to act two scene two where um, <clears throat> the king is talking to Cambridge Gray and Scroop and they they flatter him like crazy and then he's like yeah and oh and that guy that we arrested the sort of like for disorderly conduct yesterday let's let him free and they're like no no no, he should be punished because if you don't punish people who do bad things then nobody will take you seriously as the king and he's like no really we should exercise mercy and they're like what and he's like yeah i'm the king i get to do that and let's move on to the next course of business here's a letter for you and a letter for you and a letter for you and they each open their letter and they read it and their jaws drop to the floor and their eyes bulge out of their heads and he and they're all like sorry because these letters basically say i know you're a traitor um so yeah they <laughs> This has just happened, and um, yeah, they they basically have just said, I'm so sorry. Though we're not sure if they're sorry that they conspired against him or that they were found out, but anyway, they're like, they're so sorry. And King Henry says, the mercy that was quick in us but late by your own counsel is suppressed and killed. You must not dare for shame to talk of mercy, for your own reasons turn into your bosoms as dogs upon their masters, worrying you. See you, my princes, and my noble peers, these English monsters. My lord of Cambridge here, you know how apt our love was, to accord, to furnish with all appurtenance belonging to his honor. And this man hath for a few light crowns lightly conspired and sworn unto the practices of France to kill us here in Hampton. To the which, this night, no less for bounty bound to us than Cambridge is, hath likewise sworn. But, oh, what shall I say to thee, Lord Scroop, thou cruel, ingrateful, savage, and inhumane creature? Thou that didst bear the key of all my counsels, the new, <laughs> the newest, the very bottom of my soul, that almost mightst have coined me into gold wouldst thou have practiced on me for thy use may it be possible that foreign air could out of thee extract one spark of evil that might annoy my finger tis so strange that though the truth of it stands off as gross as black and white my eye will scarcely see it Treason and murder ever kept together as two yoke devils sworn to either's purpose, working so grossly in, in a natural cause, that admiration did not hoop at them. But thou, against all proportion, didst bring in wonder to wait on treason and on murder. And whatsoever cunning fiend it was that hath wrought upon thee so preposterously hath got the voice in hell for excellence and other devils that suggest by treasons do botch and bungle up damnation with patches colors and with forms being fetched from glistering semblances of piety but he that tempered thee bade thee stand up gave thee no instance why thou shouldst do treason unless to dub thee with the name of traitor if that same demon that hath gulled thee thus should with his lion's gait walk the whole world, he might return to vasty Tartarback and tell the legions, 
I can never win a soul so easy as an Englishman's. Oh, hast thou with, oh, how hast thou with jealousy infected the sweetness of affiance? Show men dutiful? Why so didst thou? Seem they grave and learned? Why so didst thou? Come they of noble family? Why so didst thou? Seem they religious? Why so didst thou? Or are they spare in diet, free from gross passion, or of mirth, or anger, constant in spirit, not swerving with the blood, garnished and decked in modest compliment, not working with the eye without the ear, and but in perjured judgment, trusting neither? Such and so finely bolted didst thou seem. And thus thy fall hath left a kind of blot to make thee full fraught man and best endued with some suspicion. I will weep for thee, for this revolt of thine, methinks, is like another fall of man. Their faults are open. Arrest them to the answer of the law and God acquit them of their practices. So yeah, he's a little bitter, especially towards Scroop. Like Scroop was one of his closest advisors and, and this is very much the, wow, you, you really did everything that you could to stab me in the back and you have not only ruined your name, but you've ruined the reputation of all Englishmen in terms of whether or not they can be swayed for money. And, um, and yeah, you've ruined the name of all decent men because you were the most decent of men and you did this to me. Yeah, he doesn't believe in guilt trips. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty scathing indictment and he condemns all of them to die. Yeah, don't betray your king. I'll see you tomorrow for more Shakespeare. <laughs>